Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. thing like washing your hair and it's interruption, interruption. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold your horses. <gasps> Can't you see I'm coming as fast as I can? Hello, hello, hello. Who is it? Oh, well, why didn't you say it was you, Mama? What do you think I was doing? I'm washing my hair. Look, look, look. All right, Mama, but I'm standing here dribbling all over the place. I never knew going to the opera could be so complicated. What? Sure, I'm going to use my gold evening bag. Of course, I know where it is. Oh, I never brought it over from your place when we moved. But what do you know? You sure? Now, don't be fresh, Mama. And you're sure, you're sure you're passing this way and you won't mind? Thanks, Mama. You're an angel. Goodbye. Oh, I'm coming, coming, coming. No rest for the wicked. Ah, <sighs> oh, Mrs. Snarton, I disturbed you, no? Ah, oh, Bertie, you disturbed me, yes. Come in, come in, come in. You're washing your hair, I, yes? I'm washing my hair, no. I mean, I'm trying to wash my hair. I fixed the hem of your dress and pressed it nice. Thanks. Also the little piece around the shoulder you didn't see. Oh, Bertha, thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. When I do a hem, it just doesn't do. You go on and finish washing your hair and hang your dress. Thanks you so much. Look so beautiful tonight at the opera. They are playing Tristan. Such a beautiful opera. I look like a wet bird dog if I don't get my hair done. You and Fritz like the opera? Fritz and I, we love the opera. In the old country we used to go. Here we've been only twice. I can do nothing more for you, Mrs. Norton. Nothing, Fritz. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton. Goodbye. Get out from under my feet, you kitten. You're the nosiest little kitten I ever saw in my life. <gasps> now the dumb waiter. Bertha, Bertha! Oh, she must have gone. Oh, why don't people who ring bells give a person time to answer them? What is it? Did your dumb waiter bell ring, Mrs. Norton? Yes, Fritz, it did. That's good. And the bells have been out of order. I've been repairing them. Oh, that's not good. There haven't been any bells out of order in my apartment. Uh, uh, what's that, Mrs. Norton? Nothing, Fritz. I just said thank you. Oh, this can't keep on happening to me. It's a conspiracy. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold your horses, whoever you are. You be quiet, too, kitten. Oh, did I step on you, Shakespeare? Well, you will get under my feet. Hey, listen, now, you're not killed. I hardly touched you, sissy. I am coming. Who is it? It's me. Who do you think it is? Oh, it could be anybody. You would have to say jokes at a time like this. At a time like what? You've got suds in your hair. <gasps> I've got suds in my hair. You look like a wet spaniel. I am a mad spaniel. What are you doing? Washing your hair? Oh, you see me with my head full of suds and you ask me what I'm doing. I just retrieved a duck or whatever it is a spaniel retrieves. <laughs> yes, I was washing my hair or trying to. That's what it looked like. But you washed your hair night before last, remember? I remember, but we're going to the opera tonight, so I washed my hair this afternoon, or rather tried to. Hello, darling. Hey, 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 you're getting me soused. 
You ought to dry yourself before you go around kissing people. I'm not going around kissing people. I'm very particular about the people I kiss. Apparently, you save your nautical displays for me. Yep, come on in. I'll let you pour water over my head and rinse the back of my neck. Yeah, well, that's a privilege. You can answer the doorbell, too. Say, why'd you ring to get in? For the same reason anybody rings a bell, to get in. But you have a key. Sure, I have a key, only I didn't have it with me. Oh, careless, careless. Now pour, and pour carefully so it doesn't go down my neck now. What do I pour it with? With a glass. Out the cold. My mistake, sorry. Out the cold. Maybe I'm not doing this to your satisfaction. You are not. Say, do you have a complex or something about washing your hair? What? Every time anything important hap- happens to you, you wash your hair. Of course. But you washed your hair night before last. It's Tonight, we're going to the opera tonight. Don't most women go to beauty parlors? Not me. It takes hours, and I don't like sitting under a dryer either. Ah, now you answer it. Who is it? I don't know. I haven't got there yet. Hello. Who is it? Just an old friend of mine. Oh, it's you, Mama. You look like a drowned rat. (laughs) My husband was more complimentary. He called me a wet spaniel. Did you bring my evening bag? Yes, ma'am. Oh, what would I do without you? You'd do without your evening bag. Put that box on the table. Did you bring that, too? I did not. David, did you bring me something? Why would you assume it was for you? Hey, leave my ankle alone, you deluded tiger. <laughs> He's had nothing to do with me. I just stepped on his tail. This box is for me, isn't it? I didn't see you bring it home. Your eyes were full of suds. Take a towel and dry the back of my head. Be a pleasure. Don't shake. I'll take my shower later. What is it, candy? Doesn't look like candy to me. Isn't perfume either. Perfume's heavy. How can I dry your hair if you don't stand still? The string is ja... Oh, no, it isn't. (gasps) It's orchids. Singular, not plural. One orchid. Want to smell, Mama? Orchids are not for smell. Exactly. They're for show. It was darling of you, darling. The orchids. You uh, don't like it? It's beautiful, really. It's... Like an overgrown iris. You don't sound very pleased. David, orchids are my least favorite flower. <gasps> shouldn't have said that. You most certainly shouldn't. I can't believe my ears. Can I help it if I don't like orchids? Anyway, it isn't a gift. It's the spirit behind it. And I love the spirit behind the orchid. You don't like orchids. Mm-hmm. Darling, you're marvelous. I am? Mm-hmm. I'm the luckiest man in the world. In a way, you're very lucky that I married you. Why? I can think of a number of reasons. Because as a gold digger, you would starve to death. You don't like orchids or big diamonds. Oh, I do all right. I got you, me, remember? That was enough to satisfy the gold digger in me for a lifetime. (laughs) Thank you, Isolde. It's all right. And now that your hair is dry, you have a date with Tristan to go to the opera. How nice. Pin on your orchid and we'll go out to dinner. I reserved a table. Will you join us, Mother? I reserved a table, too. We go out to dinner right here. Mama, you're going to stay and eat with us, too. I'm going to. Didn't Roger give you the message? When I got back to the office, he said he had. I am going to. Quiet, Mama. Yes, Roger told me. Well, then? Then I got to figuring. Figuring what? Will you two idiots let me get a word in edgewise? Will we, David? I don't know. If you think I can be railroaded into staying... Don't talk so much, Mama. Turn the light in the oven, Mama. Say... Where were you going before before we asked you to dinner? To a movie. A movie? All alone, you mean? Since w- without your supper. Too. I'm going to eat a bite later. Look, I am quite competent to run my own life. A lonely movie, all by yourself. What's playing? I really didn't notice. Doesn't matter. There's a new Donald Duck. A new Donald Duck? Hmm. Mm. What's wrong with Donald Duck, may I ask? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. He's a very remarkable duck. Very remarkable duck, yet. Mama, Aunt Louisa is a very cultured woman, isn't she? Quite, but I don't see the connection. You mean she would like Donald Duck? No, I don't think so. No, I guess not. But she likes the opera and things like that, doesn't Mm. she? She has season tickets for the Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. You like the opera, too, don't you, Mama? I'm beginning to smell a rat in the woodpile. You know, we could be sporting and tossed for it. I'll toss you. You call, Claudia. Heads we go, tails we don't. In view of my full dress suit hanging in the other room, tails we go would be more appropriate. (laughs) All right, tails we go. Just hold on a minute before you do so much tossing. There you go. Oh, it's tails, David. Virtue survives. Best two out of three. All right, do it again. Heads. Well, that's settled. 
Keep your bargain. You said two out of three. You don't have to be stuffy about it. Oh, fell on the floor. Doesn't count. Oh, yes, it does. It has. Isn't that wonderful? Mom and Aunt Louisa had such a wonderful time. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Aunt Louisa is attending a meeting about something or other, and Mama is going to the movies, and you are going to the opera. Well, oh. looks like we're stuck all right. Yeah. How long is Donald Duck playing around the corner? Program changes tomorrow. Oh, this is positively unfair. It's a coercion. It's force. It's a kind of economic slavery. Julie and Hartley don't want to go to the opera, so we have to. They didn't beg you to take the tickets. But that was before Donald Duck. David. What? Listen, have you got a big soul? And how would you want to do something wonderful for two wonderful people? Yes, darling, I would love to do something wonderful for two wonderful people. Norton. Mr. Norton, good evening. Oh, and Mrs. Franz. Sure, you know, Mama. Good evening, Bertha. Bertha, are you and Fritz busy this evening? Is there something you wanted us for? Ah, what we were planning to do, we could do some other time. No, if you were planning something, you, you go ahead. Oh, no. It's more important we help you if you need us for something. Well, uh, we were planning no more than to sit and listen to the opera over the radio. The opera? That's wonderful. How would you and Bertha like to see the opera instead of hearing it? Operas you hear, not see. No, no, I mean go to the opera. Mr. Norton and I have tickets and we just can't use them. Oh, that's too bad. Fritz, just think they won't be able to go to the opera. Is it some sickness? I hope not. No, Bertha, just a, a, a very old friend who's in town, and he's going away tomorrow. He may never come back. It may not be so bad as all that. Maybe his plans change and he comes back. He, he might not, and we can't risk the chance. But you could exchange the tickets for some other night. Oh, we thought of that, but uh, it's too late. And really, they, they shouldn't go to waste. We'd like to think of you and Fritz enjoying them. Well, if it must be... Fritz, you sound like a funeral. Oh, it's wonderful. Then hurry and dress. Here's the ticket. Oh, Fritz has dressed you from Lisa's wedding, and I have a purple dress. Oh, we will tell you all about it tomorrow. David, you have married a very devious and willful woman. <laughs> it would seem that I have. I like that. Here I am thinking I'm a very unselfish person. Here Mama comes in looking pathetic and lonely. I give up going to a wonderful opera that I was just dying to go to. David. What? You know, I wasted a perfectly good hair wash. Oh, never mind. Donald Duck will appreciate it just as much as Tristan. <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. It doesn't take endless fussing to entertain well. Often the most casual hostess is the most successful. She keeps plenty of refreshing Coca-Cola on ice and knows when to suggest, have a Coke. With Coca-Cola, you offer the ease and friendliness that have made the pause that refreshes America's favorite moment. To be sure you have plenty of Coke on ice always, it's a good idea to get it by the case. Ask your grocer or service station attendant to put a case in your car next time you shop. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.